Welcome in. First daily editorial here on the KE Report, and I'm kicking it off today with Jordan Royburn. Just a little update on where I'm currently at. My wife and I just went up into Philly, and we are seeing a couple baseball games up here and celebrating my birthday. So very excited to see yet another, I think, pretty cool city on the East Coast. Jordan, let's talk about the precious metals, because you are the founder and editor of the dailygold.com, and I'm having you on the show on a weekly basis now to update our audience on your technicals. And if you want to look at a, let's call it medium-term picture for the metals, and you look at the chart and see where gold, silver, GDX, GDXJ, all of these are trading, you could argue that they are pretty much right in the middle of their range and they have been unable to break out recently and the bullish case can say that they're also not breaking down but as a general comment how do you feel about the way the metals have reacted uh well i mean it's it's such it's such a mixed picture because given what you said Corey, there's some i mean you have gold which is held up well in recent weeks it's so it's on the higher end of its ranges Whereas if you look at silver, I mean, silver has been a clear laggard for the last couple of months. I mean, it's lagged badly. And then with silver, you have the miners, which are also lagging, but that's mostly the juniors that are really lagging badly. And then GDX is only lagging a little bit. So it's really all over the map. And big picture, I mean, we're below, I mean, other than gold, I think everything's below its 200 day moving average that we talked about the slope last week which you know, can be another indicator of trend. The 200 days uh, moving averages are sloping down. Uh, the sector is trading below that, excluding gold, which is trading right around that level. I mean, it, it, we, we would need to see a weekly close above the April highs in all these things to change the short-term view. I mean, actually, you'd really need to see uh, a weekly close above the February highs. So we're talking about 25 and a half for GDX. GDXJ kind of went a little bit higher there. I mean, it, it's high, I think it was at 43. But um, I mean, so to be 100% safe, you'd really need to see a weekly close above those levels or just, just for short, as I said, the April highs, which I mean, for GDXJ, that's about 38. It's 25 for GDX. And then for gold, it's 1300, which is real clear resistance. Silver, 18 and a half or so. And I mean, I think we're just uh, we're just clearly in a downtrend here. And the next buying opportunity is going to be after we see more selling. And I've maintained that view for the last uh, you know, month or two. And, you know, I, I could be wrong. And, and maybe the market suddenly just starts rising and, and we go above those levels. But I just I really there, I just see nothing in my work, Corey, that points to that happening. I'd see the probability is much, much stronger that we're going to trade to lower levels. And that's where we want to be buyers again. So, Jordan, even after this recent bounce that we experienced, when the metals got into a very oversold territory, especially silver, when it was down, what was it, I think, 17 days in a row, the bounce that we experienced was shorter than you could argue the last two bounces that we saw throughout this year. And again, put in a lower high. So is this one of the factors as well that you're saying, you know what, there just isn't a whole lot of strength here? Yes, it is. And, and looking at silver, I mean, w one thing with the metals, if, it just seems like they're moving very slowly. Like I've kind of gotten ahead of myself in the last year or so, um, you know, pr projecting how where moves are going to go and in what time. They, they just, they move so slow. It's like everybody knows that Silver looks really bad, and if it goes below 16, um, you know, it could get a little ugly again. But as you said, it was down 17 days in a row, and there's, I mean, there's just so much damage there that silver is eventually going to go below 16. But in the meantime, it's just so extremely oversold that to digest that move and kind of reset things, I mean, it can take at least... I think we've had about a two or three week rally closed at 1712 today. You know, maybe silver is, is going to start moving down again now or in the next week or so. But um, I, I think that's one thing we have to remember with the metals is that they're just kind of moving. I mean, and, and one reason for that is volatility has been really, really low. And that's actually one concern I have uh, turning it to gold for a moment. That's one concern I have with gold is you can draw an uptrend 
uh, from this year. If you connect the January and March lows to the recent low where we had that bounce around 1215, uh, and that trend line is coming in around 1220. And we talked you know, several weeks ago about a lot of moving at long term moving average support clustering around 1220. So that's what concerns me with gold is if gold has a clear, strong break below 1220. Um, you know, then 1150 could come into play after that. But if you're looking at, and, and then to go back to the miners, I mean, if you're looking at the miners, I mean, they're in a bearish setup and they look like they could, uh, at least the juniors, they look like they could test the December lows. You know, maybe GDX, uh, I think the December low is in the high 18s. Maybe it comes to 20 or 19 and a half at least. But when you look at those things, then you look at silver breaking 16. I mean, that tells you that gold there's increased risk for that breakdown in gold that I discussed. I mean, in other words, the, the, the weakness in uh, the other, the other parts of the sector, silver and the miners, that's really telegraphing that gold is probably going to break below 1220. Okay, Jordan, I want to relate what we're seeing in the metals to what's going on in the U S dollar as well, because it's something that we've been talking about for the last couple weeks. And I've actually brought it up with, a number of other guests, and that is this downtrend we've seen in the U.S. dollar throughout this whole year. And quite frankly, you know what, this is a weakness simply just against euro strength. But when you do typically see the dollar show such weakness, usually some money goes into the precious metals. And it's hard to say that people are actually looking at the precious metals with the U.S. dollar continuing to move down. Yeah, well, I, th I think the I think the move in the last couple of weeks in the dollar that weakness that coincided with the little rally that we've had in precious metals. Although it's been weak in a couple of days, it started rolling over. Um, but the 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 benefit of the dollar weakness, um, more so than precious metals, I think has been emerging markets and uh, Europe. And if you look at uh, the dollar against uh, like uh, emerging market currencies, I mean, emerging market currencies have been fairly strong recently, so the dollar hasn't been that strong. But I mean, you pointed out it's basically the dollar index is mostly a dollar euro cross. And unfortunately, Corey, um, it's interesting because let me go back for a second. If you look at the last year or so, gold against foreign currencies has been very strong. And that's why even though the dollar until this decline, even though the dollar was fairly strong, um, gold was holding up really well and, and specific uh, junior companies were performing really well. And that's because gold's global price, which is just another term for looking at gold against foreign currencies. I mean, it, it's it's been really strong. Now that is starting to come off. That looks vulnerable, like it could come down. And so that that's an, another thing that's not a good sign because given the fact that right now gold has been weak against other currencies, that tells you that the move, the recent strength in gold has just been entirely due to dollar weakness. Whereas, as I pointed out, there are numerous times over the last year, 18 months, where the dollar was going up, but gold wasn't getting hit that much. And, because, and, and that's because gold was showing such global strength. It was showing strength against other currencies. And now we have the reverse. And the reason that's worrisome is because when the dollar has a bounce, where is gold strength going to come from? Because it's been weak against everything else. So when the dollar has a bounce, you can see um, potentially a bigger decline in gold. But I, as for the dollar, I wouldn't I, I mean, I, I, I don't know if the dollar is starting a bear market. I don't think so. Um, I, I still think it's probably going to move higher over time, but I, I do think over time they both can gold and the dollar will rise together. I know that's a whole nother conversation. I would just really avoid the the thinking that, OK, the dollar's broken down, the dollar's going to go down and, and now precious metals are going to start zooming higher. I don't I don't see anything in my work that points to that right now, unfortunately. OK, Jordan, to wrap us up, I do want to talk about what the Fed is expected to do next month, because we did have the Fed minutes come out just yesterday. And again, they are pointing to a rate hike coming in June and even a slow unwind of the balance sheet. But that's going to be further down the road, more just a lack of reinvesting some of their assets that they hold there. But there's an argument that every time the Fed, or at least the last two times that the Fed has raised rates, 
we have seen the gold price and even gold equities do quite well. When you and I were chatting off mic, you don't necessarily share this opinion. Can you please explain? Well, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with it. I, I guess the point is let's not just have an immediate knee-jerk reaction that as soon as the Fed hikes, precious metals are going to have a good rally again. And the, they've had three hikes, and the, the precious metals have rallied after these hikes, but the rallies have been weaker and weaker. I mean, of course, we had the, the first one we could say that started the bull market, which is on pause now or, or on hold. That was a great move. Uh, then we had the December 2016 bottom. But, Corey, after the Fed hiked, uh, the precious metals dumped lower for like another 10 days or even two weeks. Because I remember, because I was making a, a leverage bet on the sector, a leverage trade, and unfortunately I got in too early, I got stopped out, and then it, it zoomed higher. Uh, so I remember that clearly, that after the hike, the market tanked for a little while before we had the rally. And, and then you know people were making the point. Well, okay, the Fed rallied. Then I mean, look at we had the March move, and yeah, the 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 Fed, uh, excuse me, the, the sector rallied after that hike. But I mean, right now gold is really the only thing that's still holding the gain from that March hike. Everything else is at the same level or trading lower. So it really didn't do that much for the sector. And basically. Um, I've talked about that we could have a summer bottom, but you know, I, Corey, I'm looking at the technicals of the market sentiment and how oversold the market could get. And the, the Fed and the hike is really secondary to me. We can't, we have to look at the market first. I mean, if it's really oversold when the Fed hikes, then we probably will get a, uh, a rally soon after the Fed hikes. But if the market is not that oversold and the Fed hikes, then you could see some selling for a couple weeks, like we saw in December before uh you know you know before we get a, a a sustained rebound the one we've kind of been talking about so i would just i would just not have that knee-jerk reaction that you know fed hike well automatically the next day that means everything precious metals is going to start rallying I, I would i would focus more on the charts and sentiment in the sector now one last point um as to how far that um that's this, you know, potential summer low, summer rebound could go. I mean, that will depend on if the Fed will hike in September or not. Now, if, if you tell me that the Fed's not going to hike in September, we're going to see, you know, economic conditions get worse, interest rates come down, then we may get more than a one or two month rally. We could get something sustainable. But if the Fed is going to hike in September, then, you know, we could get the reaction that we got in, uh, you know, March, for example, where we have a rally for a month, and then things kind of roll over and go sideways for a while. Well, hey, Jordan, it's something that we're going to be following as we get closer to, A, this next hike, and then down the road in September as well. It's going to be interesting to see how the markets react. But as always, I do appreciate how you're focusing on the charts and telling us exactly what you think. I think what you provide to your subscribers is very valuable, and I appreciate you joining us on our show. So, Jordan, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Corey.